so question then you released the, the, the book that we discussed in 2022 drop the mic marketing what kind of drove you what did you get up one morning and just think gee like i really need to write a book like where, where did it come from yeah so this is so this book is really before the use of chat gpd so it was it actually was written and i'm not a writer but I have a, a guy by the name of Mike Almer in my network. He's written for some of the big newspapers here in Canada. And we started a relationship and then he said, hey, I, I want to write your book. So we ended up doing a barter deal where we ended up doing advertising for him and, and he wrote my book for me. And, and it was such a great experience working with Mike. He uh, sat me down uh, in my office here. We had about four different two-hour conversations. He recorded all of our conversations. And he would ask me everything from where I grew up, the trials and tribulations of growing up, to starting the business, about my parents, everything in between. And he got all of this content. And then he went back to his drawing board. And then he came up with the entire idea for the book. He came up with the, he ghost wrote the book. And, and he did a fantastic job. I had no idea where that book was going. And he came back to me and said, here's your book, Drop the Mic, from Failed Rockstar to digital marketing rock star. And that was the whole idea behind it. So it talked about my whole growing up, having the band, having music being a passion. And he intertwines this whole element of like rock music throughout the book, which I thought was just fantastic. But if I were to just sit here and drum up a book by myself, heck man, forget about it. I couldn't do it. Maybe with chat GPT, but I couldn't do it on my own. That's for sure. It's, uh, but sometimes I find that those business relationships are serendipity, right? Like you, it's not quite blind luck because you make your own path, you forge your own path and you surround yourself in your network of the people who will undoubtedly influence that journey at some point. And it's amazing to hear how that journey went for you. I guess you'd never have seen that coming. You'd never have prompted yourself to write a book. It just came. And I guess what's the, because you're the second guest we've had on the show that's released their own book or two. What's the impact been since you've written that book? Has it? improved improved debt metrics in the business or is it just a personal tick box or there there are several ways you can use a book we've worked with clients that have leveraged books as lead magnets right as as the, the top of funnel marketing approach for their business for me though it was really it wasn't that at all it's more of a legacy piece but something i always have there i give to friends and family I give to clients when i went to when i speak at events i'll bring some books with me i'll do some q and a at the end of my session and anybody that answers a question correctly gets a book so it, it's things like that that's how i'm using the book I, if it makes sales fantastic but it's really not the focal point of having the book it's really it, it's a way to complement all the other efforts i'm making and helps me become more known and trusted in my niche if people read the book they obviously get to know me and then inevitably hopefully they become a client of mine one day an amazing story to hear and, and refreshing to hear a book written that, that doesn't have a business angle behind it which is i'm a i'm a bookaholic i've loved you can't you can see some of the books off the side i've got all the classics i've got stephen king i've got i'm a nerd so i've got stephen king i've got star wars we've got lord of the rings we've got and then i've got all the biographies of different people are usually quite polarizing people but i love literature and and my whole i've got my sons up to love literature as well and I just think in this day and age of digital everything, digital first everything, there is nothing still that quite competes with holding in your hands a work of art from somebody else. Because that's what they are. It's, it's a work of passion. It's a work of art. And the, every book tells a story. And it's not always the story that is written in the book, which is, again, like it, you can take it to a lot of levels. Just the fact that you can use if it, it to it. help people share your story, that's beautiful. And it's interesting, as I pull up the book, because Mike Almer wrote his own book here called Show and Tell Writing, and he talks about a great short business book about how to write a short, great business book. And this specific book here, he talks about that. If you think you know the title of your book, then you've done it wrong. You actually don't know the title of your book until it's over, right? You don't start with the title and then write the book. You write the book and then come up with the title, right? It's like writing a LinkedIn post. You should never have your hook line first. Write the damn post, tell people what you want to tell them, then write the hook line because then only then can you tell what's going to be worth their time, what's going to catch their attention from what you thought was going to come out. The amount of times I write a post that goes nowhere, I'll, I'll go, oh, I must write a post about that. And then I start writing it and I go off a completely different tangent and end up writing something about something totally different. I'm like, oh, 
didn't see that coming in the slightest. I think it's just kind of repetition and practice for a lot of people. But absolutely, if you've got something of value to share, make sure that you worry more about getting it off your chest than putting a name on it. 100%. For a lot of marketing. Yeah, definitely. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's, I, I think that's a, a fantastic way to put it. It's just, and also what's the purpose of having the book in the first place? That's a question you need the answer to. And I think, again, it's a recurring theme, much like starting a podcast. If the immediate thought is I'm going to release this book because I have a great idea and I'm going to make lots of money from it. You, you're going to set yourself up for failure, a lunch bag, a lunch bag letdown. You know what I mean? It's not going to work out that way. Lunch it's a great podcast. compliment. You're right. A hundred percent. It's a complimentary piece to everything that everything else that you're doing. If, if look, I can understand the frustration. If you dedicate a lot of time to your podcast, like if you're working on it five days a week to try to get it off the ground and your business is suffering because of it. Yeah, sure. I can understand that frustration, but if you just time it correctly, set chunks in your calendar of when you're going to work on it and just chip away at it. Um, you're going to be, just going to, you're going to set yourself up for success that way. And we talked earlier on, Paul, about how majority of podcasts don't get past the 10th episode. It, it makes sense. I'm sure people batch 10 episodes in one sitting and it's, okay, let's just test this out and see if it works. They launch 10 episodes. It doesn't get the traction they had expected. So it, it falls on deaf ears and flat feet and they just, they, they forget about it. That, that's the wrong way to do it. I, every single week, continue to go. Give yourself a realistic timeline in order to really see the results. And I would say, give yourself, at first, for me, it was a hundred episodes. I'm like, I'm going to get to 100 episodes. Then we got the 100. It's okay, cool. We've gotten some business from this. This is awesome. We had these great relationships, great people we met and let's do a hundred more. And we did a hundred more. So every hundred is like that kind of checkpoint where it's, do we want to do a hundred more? I think that's the, the nice kind of caveat that I can share with the audience from this is and i, I totally agree 